Hello Indie Game fans, the Steam Mix Festival is currently upon us and with literally hundreds of demos to check out, there's plenty to fiddle around with, but we are beginning of course with Metroidvanias. I've included some 2D Souls-like titles as well, since there are not enough of them to warrant a separate video, with a nice mix of new games and long anticipated ones that must be checked out. Let's begin with Giga Sword, a simple looking pixel art title where the comically oversized sword is the central mechanic where you have to figure out how to transport it through the world, adding a puzzle element. It had a successful Kickstarter campaign and looks pretty neat, but the puzzle portion does make this feel different to others in the space. The one-bit black and white game has increased in popularity over the years, which is not an easy art style to pull off, with Astro Knight being the title of interest here. It has you playing as a spaceman attempting to take back a planet invaded by strange creatures, and will of course be compared to Gato Roboto which is a high bar. I've also been keeping tabs on Zeppelin Pygon for a little bit, where it's most interesting since you play as an alien hive mind rather than some sort of humanoid form, making the exploration, platforming and combat something different. It is a weird looking game for sure, but I do love my weird indie games, so check it out and see how it feels to play. A new entry never before seen on the channel is Zoria and the Cursed Land, one that I'm excited to share since I've been following this developer on Twitter for quite a while, waiting for just the right time to show it off, and where better than the Steam Mix Festival. It looks like quite a classic fantasy entry where you play as a half-orc adventurer, exploring the world and looking for your lost friends, where I am interested to see if there is a unique hook in this game. Glimmer and Nura has long been on my watch list, since this pen-painted entry is one of the most gorgeous games that I've ever seen, with a focus on ranged combat through the use of spells which looks pretty good. There are platforming challenges and boss fights as well, with the stinger at the end of the trailer perhaps foreshadowing something more interesting. I was pretty excited when Ghost Song popped its head out earlier this year, since this is a very long in development title that might as well have been Vaporware, but they got signed by publisher Humble Games, which appears to have given them the runway to finish this up. It is a grim dark sci-fi entry that looks like Metroid crossed with Salt and Sanctuary, and with the release later this year, it will be a great time to check out the demo. I'm sorry that happened to you. Talk to 
instead. Let's kick off the top 5 with Last Vanguard, a game which I've covered before, which did launch and then cancel its Kickstarter campaign, needing more time for polish before trying again. Yes, that of course means that the demo is critical since it might just influence your decision to support the campaign when it relaunches down the line, but the rifle that our protagonist wields looks interesting as a combat mechanic. It does look to have quite a bit of Hollow Knight inspiration while being its own thing, having a tremendous amount of potential. I've been looking forward to Frontier Hunter Urza's Bureau of Fortune for such a long time, so the demo will either solidify my hype for this or dampen it considerably. With this is a 2.5D entry with multiple playable characters that you can switch between, even being able to call upon them like something in a fighting game. It is the follow-up to a roguelite platformer but it's a full-on metroidvania and it does certainly give me bloodstained ritual of the night vibes. However, the influences and settings in this are a mishmash of so many ideas, from fantasy to sci-fi, so who knows what you will encounter in this game. I just talked about the tarnishing of Juxtia a week ago and here we are with the demo, a 2D Souls-like title that looks phenomenal due to the intricately detailed pixel art. All 2D Souls-like games will live and die by their combat, so do get a feel with this demo, and with a projected summer 2022 release window, the full version may be out sooner than you think. I don't have much to add on 9 Souls since this hand-drawn title is already one of the most highly anticipated games coming to us from Taiwanese developer Red Candle Games who are best known for their horror titles so this is an interesting change. I love the self-titled Tao Punk setting that draws upon Chinese mythology having Sekiro-like 2D combat as well. Moon Scars has a fantastic narrated trailer that sets up the game wonderfully, so please enjoy and I'll be back in a little bit to give my thoughts. In the deepest caverns beneath the kingdom, where the light of the cruel moon cannot reach, Grey Irma, the fierce warrior and protagonist of Moon Scars, searches for a mystery that will bring her closer to the truth of her world and of herself. Welcome to the Earth Bowels. The Earth Bowels is one of the areas you will discover further on in your journey. It is an ancient place 
filled with long buried secrets. Secrets connected to not only the sculptor, but Mother Earth herself and the cruel goddess, the moon. The caverns are filled with twisting corridors and treacherous chasms. To navigate them, you will first need to discover the ability to dash through the air at supernatural speed. The bowels play host to all manner of foul beings that threaten to end your journey. Gilded foes, vulnerable only to witchery. Creatures capable of corrupting your very icor. Vicious warlords who command armies of underlings. And ultimately, a comrade in arms from your past. Lyos, fellow soldier of the pristine squad now turned. His attacks are mighty enough to shake the very earth. And you'll have to discover his weakness for yourself. On your own journey to meet your maker. As you can see, this is another stylish pixel art 2D souls like Metroidvania, which is more in common with something like Blasphemous, with excellent use of color and some stunning animations. It also has a summer 2022 release window, so if you're at all curious, please check this out, taking the number one spot. For more Metroidvania games, watch these videos and I will see you after the jump.